losses in living standards and um, they are blaming their politicians, rightly so, for um, not doing anything about this earlier. So they are not really, they don't really have a, an alternative yeah. to offer, um, but it um, uh, just finds that these measures are unacceptable. Well, let's talk about big picture, the European Union. How, you know, how important is Greece to the EU? I mean, if Greece fails, I understand that banks in France and Germany and, and other countries, you know, hold a lot of the paper gas. But yeah, why why not just let Greek default and just say the heck with it? You guys are on your own. Well, there are a couple of reasons to that. First of all, from a Greek perspective, it would have uh, obviously a devastating effect on the economy. Um, it would mean that um, basically the Greek banks would collapse, people would lose their savings, so the economy would be devastated. Um, from the perspective of the other Europeans, um, you mentioned that a lot of banks in other European countries do hold this Greek debt and might get into trouble if um, Greece goes bankrupt. Um, and that also includes now the European Central Bank, which has um, purchased significant um, amounts of uh, Greek bonds. Um, also, there would be a risk of this um, uh, uh, spreading over to other uh, European Union or Eurozone member states like Italy or Spain, because if Greece falls, the question would be, do investors still trust to put their money into Italy or Spain, or do they fear that um, the same process will happen there again? And also, symbolically, obviously, this would be seen as a historic failure of European integration, and the Euro is not just an economic project, it's also a political project, and uh, therefore there's also strong political will to, to save it. Having said all of that, yeah. um, I think there is increasing willingness among other European capitals now to contemplate the possibility of a uh, Madrid default, and the time that has passed in this crisis has been used um, by um, the banks um, to prepare themselves for that. So the impact now would probably, we can only speculate, but yeah. probably not be as bad now as it was a year ago. And the, the people around here were saying, well, so what? What happens here? But uh, explain to us how a failure of Greece or a, or a failure of, of this particular measure and problems in Europe would impact us here in Canada and in Saskatchewan and Ontario and all over. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't be too concerned. Um, the, the effects could be much stronger. Um, the good thing is that Canada and Canadian banks are not significantly exposed to this Greek debt, so it wouldn't be that Canadian banks get into problems. The main effect would be indirect. Uh, the European Union is Canada's second largest trading partner. If the European Union goes into a sustained period of slowdown, economic recession, then this would have, uh, obviously affect um, Canadian business, less orders from Europe, and so on. So that would be the indirect effect in an interconnected world economy. Um, if Canada's second largest trading partner goes into a recession, um, that will be bad for the Canadian the economy everywhere. With this, all of this violence, setting that aside, do you believe that this is actually going to work? That the uh, Greek Parliament will will somehow convince the people of Greece that this is a good idea and they will move forward? The problem with these measures is that they are piling more and more austerity measures on top of each other and thus slowing down economic growth more and more. But in order to get a country out of debt, you need economic growth. So um, I have some concerns about the very approach that is taken here, um, requiring austerity, which uh, uh, deepens the recession, which uh, decreases tax income, which uh, creates the need for more austerity. So it's a vicious circle, if you will. Um, uh, and um, uh